Hey, what's up guys? Yuka Chipsy, and we are back here today for week three of the BBL. And this week we're going to be facing off against Steve Willie. And this man has a Marshadow team, which is pretty wild. Marshadow is probably one of the most exciting Ubers, I think, um, to use in, in this league, for sure. I think Marshadow, along with stuff like Arceus, and obviously McGinn are, you know, some of the really top tier Ubers that are allowed in the format. So... It's going to be a fun one. Um, D. Willie is an Australian as well, which is cool. You don't, I don't see, I don't play too many of them honestly, but there are quite a few of them around, and he seems like a really chill guy. He's got a really cool team, Mega Scizor, uh, regular Deancey. He also had Latios on his team, which which is nice, um, and Rotom Wash. So, really cool team. I think he supported Marshadow really nicely. Um, before we jump into the match, I want to thank Six Foot Axe for joining my team this week. And I want to thank Aaron for recording my game and also hooking me up with the, the graphics for this uh, this game, the thumbnail and the layout. I think they both look amazing. So shout out to him for that. Um, the graphic designer was Grant, I believe is his name. And he does an amazing job. If you guys are interested in uh, purchasing any of his, uh, his work. So yeah, we're going to get into the match. Uh, the team we've brought here this week is um, it's a pretty balanced team but it's kind of based around supporting the Gina sweep ultimately in the end game so first up we have Lando I'm a pretty defensive set I am Yachi which helps me check uh, most variants of Marshadow although Life Orb Spectral Thief into Hidden Power Ice can uh, actually take out Lando depending on uh, if hazards are up and what kind of role he gets with Spectral Thief and like if he's naive or jolly so yeah Marshadow is a big threat <laughs> and uh but this Lando serves a couple of purposes. It lets me get, uh, lets me defog versus his team, which is pretty important. Uh, I do have Hidden Power 5 for his Scizor, so I can to a go max HP, like defensive variants of Scizor, which is really nice. And Earthquake is quite spammable versus his team. I am creeping uh, Rotom on this spread, actually, so I won't be outsped by Rotom. And I've got enough defense to be able to take any anything from Scizor pretty easily and to a go that thing. Uh, also, is a pretty nice buffer against Physical Arcanine, which he definitely could bring. He is Z Arcanine as well, so he could run something like Z Wild Charge, so to hit like Ho -Oh or Z Outrage to hit my my Latias. So uh, that's definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, but this Lando is a, a bit of a team support uh, player this week. I do have Defog, as I mentioned on this set, which does ease uh, my Ho -Oh's time coming in on rocks if I can remove those early. And another nice thing is Lando defogs versus his rockers. So he's got Deancey, Nidoqueen, and I think he may have had one other rocker on his team. Uh, possibly all those might be the only two rockers. Uh, regardless, they don't set rocks versus Lando. And Lando can always remove them, which is nice. Um, the next one we have here is my Latias. I am, uh, I think I'm Roost, Healing Wish, Psychic, and Hidden Power Fire on this set. So um, hid Hidden Power Fire, obviously, to, to spank the Mega Scizor. And uh, Healing Wish is just really nice support for either my Lando my ho -Oh or my Nikian in the late game. If I can uh, weaken his team down uh, early game with Megina and I can revive it later on in the game with my Latias, that is obviously going to be really nice for us. It's always a nice wink on Megina. Uh, then, then I have a Chardy Berry, um, pretty defensive ho -Oh. This does allow me to take stuff like Technician Life Orb Rock Tombs from his Marshadow, as well as something like a Rock Slide from like a Rogue Life Orb Nidoqueen. Queen. Um, I can take any hit from Deancey. And uh, yeah, it's a really solid one here. He doesn't really switch well into it. I am toxic on this set to be able to lure Rotom and Arcanine, which are probably going to be more than likely his best, and Deancey, of course, which are going to be his defensive counterplay to Hoa. And if I can toxic those, then it's going to be easier for my Latios to wear them, my Latios to wear them down. Uh, and my Lando, every time Rotom wants to come in on like an EQ from Lando, it's going to be taking that toxic chip, so that's going to be important. Uh, and honestly, Hoa can actually beat. Rotom 1v1 like very easily with Toxic and Roost. Uh, Rotom's Hydros are doing like 30 or something to my spread, so yeah, ho is insane. Uh, then I have a Shift Gear Beginner. Now this week I am actually uh, Z Synchronized, so I'm Z Psychic. And uh, I faced Z Beginner back in ITL actually. We used to allow Z on Beginner. I've got it this season in the ITL without Z moves, but when we had it back in ITL, like season 6 or something, I think I, I had a Nita Queen. That was my defensive counterplay to my opponent Z Beginner. And I actually ran Yachi on my queen because I expected him to run Sub-Zero Slammer, which he did run. Um, but funnily enough, Z Synchronize, which is a bit of a like, it's a bit of an unorthodox move to run on the beginner. It's uh, it's capable of Okoing Max Bidef Queen most of the time. So I think the min roll is 99% or something like that. So it's a uh, it's a much safer way of getting around a potential like Max Bidef Nidoqueen Queen than Z Ice Beam is. 
And it also doubles as a nice way of damaging Arcanine, because I can kill like offensive Arcanine or like max HP Arcanine after rocks with Z Synchronize uh, at neutral, which is really important. So that that is important because Arcanine and Nidoqueen are really the only things standing in the way of my shift gear three attacks Megana from uh, sweeping. So I also hit, have hidden power fire on this set, which is going to allow me to remove the scissor after rocks if he's max HP. Otherwise, he just drops to it after rocks. Um, yeah, so really, really solid Mon, Dazzling Gleam, uh, kills Latios and his my shadow. Then I have a uh, Spideff, I think a predominantly Spideff um, on this Pharaoh here. Helps me with his Latios and also helps me uh, with his Deancey as well, which is pretty nice. I can take anything from Rotom, set up rocks, throw out leeches. He doesn't have a nice leech absorption on his team, so that's really, really clean for us. And then lastly, I do have a, uh, a Weavile here. I think I'm... Um, I think I'm a mother banned or life orb on this Weavile set, but um, either way, I'm a, I'm a nice uh, nice early to mid game breaker or a late game cleaner with Ice Shard. So that is going to be the team. Um, based on what based on what my opponent brought, I'm expecting potentially a Rocks lead, so potentially like Shook and Nita Queen, or um, maybe even Rotom because it's a pretty safe lead versus my Rockers. He can if I lead Fairy, he can vault out, and if I lead Lando, then he gets um, momentum. Probably more than likely with Volt Switch on my obvious U-turn. So we're going to lead off. I believe I lead with. Um, this game happened a little while ago. Uh, he's going to lead off with his uh, Arcanine here as I lead off with my Landorus. As um, we, we get the lead matchup here. Uh, like I said, if you led Rotom, I, um, I do outspeed with U-turn. Um, but he's going to lead his Arcanine here, and I do expect him to make the play into his Rotom. So I'm going to go for the U-turn here as he's going to reveal to be Intimidate, so he's not Flash Fire, which is, which makes sense because Intimidate is really nice to be able to drop the attack of stuff like ho -Oh, but he's going to go into his Rotom here, and we get damage off with the U-turn, revealing that um, he's pretty defensive, so he's going to take that pretty well, as I do have a bit of attack in this Landorus, and I'm going to go into my Latias here, uh, because I want to I want to get a Psychic off, I want to get um, see if he's going to let his Rotom get chipped, and worst case, he goes out into Scissor and I hit and power fire that the following turn. Or just go hard ho but he does go into his Deancey here. And uh, this, is, this is interesting. So Deancey is going to take um, like a decent chunk, honestly, from that, considering that I'm not really heavily invested in my special attack. And he's going to reveal lefties. So he, he's potentially mixed defensive or predominantly um, more offensive, actually, based on that damage. So uh, I'm going to go into Lando here, uh, although I won't be able to get the Intimidate off, I'm going to take his Diamond Storm pretty well, as he's more than likely a special attacking variant, as uh, he's unfortunately going to crit me here, which means that I'm going to have to play a little bit more conservatively with my Lando now, I can't um, I can't get it in as many times um, from that crit, but we should we should still be okay, so I'm going to go for the U-turn here, again expecting him not to throw away his de his uh, Deancey there, it's his, only, it's his only ground immunity, so he's, he's kind of forced to go Rotom here. As I get in with the U-turn, and this turn I'm going to go out into my Ferrothorn. I think just to throw out the Leech Seeds. I don't want to set up Rocks too uh, prematurely, because I'm going to have to defog them away if he gets up his own uh, with Lando later on. And because Lando is weakened, um, I, want to be, I want to be a bit careful with how often I send Lando in, because defogging Rocks might be important for Ho-Oh in the late game. So I'm going to fire for Leech Seed, as he does go into his Arcanine here. And uh, this... Any, any chip on Arcanine is crucial, because McGinn's, like I mentioned earlier, McGinn's Z-Synchronize is going to do about 75% if he's a max HP variant, which he, he could well be at this stage in the game. So I'm going to get back, back up to 181, back up to full, as he's actually going to make the double this turn. He's going to switch hard out into Scizor. As I go into Ho, it was a bit of a mid-ground. Um, it, it covered him going for the Z-Outrage, which I know was a bit wild, but had I gone into Latios, um, or had I, got, had I gone into my Latias there, or, or my Lando, him going for Z, Dragon Pulse or Z Outrage would have done quite a lot. It would have killed my Latios more than likely if it was Z Outrage. And he was like adamant or something like that. Um, and Ho-Oh took anything from that um, from that Arcanine, including stuff like Wild Charge. So um, Ho-Oh was always a nice mid ground there. As he does actually go into Scizor, I guess expecting me to go into my Latios that turn. Or maybe expecting me to go into my Lando. So we get in there. As uh, this turn, I do just fire for Toxic because I am expecting him to go into his Deancey or his Rotom. So he's going to go into his Deancey here, and I'm going to fire for Toxic. But unfortunately, I'm going to miss, which is uh, pretty unfortunate because if I Toxic this thing here, um, every time Latios came in and clicked Psychic, it um, it wasn't going to recover anything back from its lefties. 
and Hoa would actually be able to 1v1 it with uh, my Charlie Berry intact and with just having Roost on this set, so uh, a little bit unfortunate, but Toxic does miss every now and then. So we're going to switch out here and they're going to go back onto Ferro as he does just fire off. I believe he fires off the, the Diamond Storm here, so he's used, he's used two Diamond Storms, so that's two out of eight. And I think he's gonna get the uh, I think he's gonna get the defense boost here. Yeah, he, he gets the defense boost as um I believe this turn I threw my rocks up, I think. I think I do throw my rocks up here. Um yeah, as he reveals the hidden power fire. And uh, that's gonna do that's gonna do a decent chunk. I am chopple on this pharaoh, by the way, so I can um I can take a close combat from his marsh shadow and uh, kill it with Garibal after the defense drop, so uh, that's why I'm not getting lefty's recovery. So I'm gonna gonna throw up my rocks as he does just go for the hidden power fire. So he's hidden power fire. He's diamond storm, probably moonblast, and the last move could be potentially stealth rocks or some kind of other coverage move. But uh, I'm gonna switch out here into my Lando as he's gonna hidden power fire once more, and uh, this puts me in a good spot because I know he values his DNT. He's not gonna want to lose it. It's at a nice amount of health. It still comfortably takes on my Ho. -Oh. Or so he thinks, and it comfortably takes on my laddie. So I'm gonna gonna click U-turn once again. No, actually, I think I do. I EQ here. I think I EQ. Actually, I do EQ. I do EQ because I know I can outspeed Rotom, and he, his Rotom doesn't get a lot um, from just vaulting uh, from from staying in and attacking my Lando. So I'm gonna U-turn out here, and I'm gonna go into my Pharaoh. I think this turn. Yeah, I go into my Pharaoh, as uh, he's just gonna go for the Hydro this turn, and we take that pretty well. Like th this Hydra isn't going to do too much to Pharaoh. Uh, we will be able to take another. And I think this turn I do just leech up because if he stays in, he gets chipped down in range of, I think, a, a, a Brave Bird from Ho after rocks. But he is just going to vault out here and he's going to go out into his um, his Arcanine. And the fact that this thing's taken that round of crucial stealth rock damage that I needed, as well as this leech, he's he's certainly going to be in range now of, uh, of an attack from my Mugina. So... As he synchronize, uh, that is. So he, he's going he's gonna to get leech seed damage. And this actually, this leech seed damage is going to be important. This is going to tell me that based on the amount I recovered from that leech, that he's not actually HP invested, implying that he's more than likely offensive. So this is going to influence uh, how I play around this Arcanine from this point on. So I'm going to go into my Latias here, as he does go for the Hidden Power Ice, expecting me to go into my Lando, which was a nice read. Had I gone Lando, it would have really paid off from there, because... Uh, Lando would have been able to take uh, like a flare blitz or something after the intimidate, but his hidden power ice is going to bounce off Laddie here, and I think I do just go for the psychic as he is going to go out to his DNC, and yeah, I, th I think that's the play. I either psychic or I double. No, I, I make the switch out into my yeah, I make the switch out into my Thero in case he was Z outrage because I wasn't creeping, um, I wasn't even creeping adamant max speed Arcanine, so going Thero covered him staying and going for the Z outrage. And the reason I made that play is because he, he revealed to be like no investment on that special attack, but I knew he was offensive. So he was more than likely physical with um, with Hidden Power Ice. So that, that led me to believe that he could potentially be something like Z Outrage or Z Fleblitz. So I'm going to go into my Fairy Hitter Scout for that, but he makes the play into his DNC. And I'm going to switch hard out into my Ho-Oh, expecting him to go for the Hidden Power Fire, as that that is what he chooses to do. And... Um, because, because I didn't land that Toxic earlier, I am going to have to waste my Charty Bear here and throw out the Toxic now on the DNC just to get this thing chipped because this thing is a little bit annoying for my team at this point. It's um, it's worn down my Pharaoh with repeated HP fires and I don't know if he has Moonblast at this stage, so Latias isn't a, isn't a comfortable check to it. But now that it's toxic um, I will be able to roost on Laddie uh, in front of this DNC. I think Moonblast is only doing about 50 to my spread, so I can ultimately stall that out with the toxic damage, but he's going to go for the diamond storm, and we, we take we take about half from that with the um, with the charity berry. So that means that uh, we can roost on this thing. Um, his, his diamond storms after my roost are only going to be doing about fifty percent. So I do just roost up here as uh, he's going he's going to run out of diamond storms eventually, and even if he crits, uh, we will be able to live a hit. As uh, this should only do about fifty percent, but. <laughs> My man's going to crit me, and uh, it's going to going to do about 75%. I think, no, it's more like 78% actually on that hit. Um, it's going to do a lot. And this is going to mean that I am in range of another crit. So I don't want to risk ho -Oh at this stage. I don't have a reason to. It's still really, really nice for me, and I can always pivot in, get regen, and come back in later on something like Sizzle. So 
Gonna go into my um, into my beginner here. As he actually makes the switch out into his Arcanine, so um, this was either a uh, a really really nice calculated read, or he just wanted to get Arcanine in on my Hobo and click something like Z Wild Charge if that was his set. So either way, it works out for him. But he's gonna take some Rocks Chip, which is which is again really really nice for me. This means he can't switch in at all anymore. So I'm gonna go into my Hobo here, expecting him to go for the Blitz on my beginner, <laughs> and I'm, I'm gonna play a little bit of. A little bit of switching to get um, some more regen back on on this um, ho -Oh and uh, ensure that it, it's going to be at as high amount of health as possible. Whilst this Arcanine will actually be taking it out, itself out, so I'm going to go into ho -Oh on the Flare Blitz, and then I'm going to go into Lando on the Wild Charge, and then I'm going to go into my Laddie on the Flare Blitz, which will lead to him dying from recoil. So um, even if he does now click Z Outrage, it won't actually kill my Laddie because uh, he's intimidated but I actually go into Ho-Oh so forget forget that <laughs> I'm gonna go into Ho-Oh here as at minus one his wild charges if he did even if he made that prediction would be doing a lot less than the first one so now I'm gonna make the switch out into my laddie as uh, he clicks hidden power ice there and Ho-Oh is gonna be at a nice amount of health after this exchange so he's now gonna go for the flow blitz and this is gonna take out his Arcanine with the recoil here and laddie's gonna chew that up pretty nicely and uh, he's probably one of the his second biggest offensive threat after his Marsh Shadow is going to drop. And this is actually going to bring in Marsh Shadow. And um, I am actually Cassie Berry on this Latias set. So I will be able to take a Spectral Thief and leave Marsh Shadow in, either in range of Life Orb or Rocks. Um, so I'm going to click uh, I'm going to click Psychic here. As he's actually going to go for the Shadow Sneak. And this is going to do it's going to do a nice amount. I don't know why he Spectral Thiefed. I think maybe he thought I was Scarf on this, on this Latias actually. Uh, based on the way I played it thus far, so he's going to go for the Shadow Sneak here, and um, I'm assuming that's why he didn't click Spectral Thief, I'm not too sure there, but either way, it does a ton, and it reveals that it probably more than likely would have taken out my Laddie had I not had the Berry there, so I can understand the play. Um, I, I want to preserve Laddie, like, this is this wasn't greedy on my part, this is thinking of an endgame where Healing Wish might actually... Uh, be really important for beginner. So I'm actually going to switch out to Weavile. If he makes the prediction here, which he could do, and click Close Combat or Rock Tomb or something predicting a switch, then he takes up my Weavile. But I have a beginner in the back that can take any hit from this Marsh Shadow and, and take it out with Dazzling Gleam. But he's going to make a really nice play and click Rock Tomb here. It, it killed Laddie. And the fact that I'd shown Cassie Berry meant that he had no reason to fear Scarf. So no reason to click Shadow Sneak there. He, uh, he made the right play. And uh, I'm going to go into my beginner here. And I'm just going to click Dazzling Gleam. I'm going to take a, a decent amount from this Spectral Thief. This is going to do about half, a half to me. So a little over 50%, which is uh, really nice damage for him. But because I preserve Laddie, I do have that healing wish. Uh, but now he's going to go out into his... I think he goes out into his... Um, his Nidoqueen here, which is obviously a big threat to me again. I, I can't guarantee that I outspeed it at this point, so... I'm going to have to play around it as though it does potentially outspeed me. So I'm going to go into my fairy here as he does, I think, go for the rocks this turn. He does. So he makes a good aggressive play, then goes for rocks. He, he's playing this really well. I like the way he's playing it. This was a real back and forth as uh, now he is going to take me out with the ice beam. I think he crits me here. Um, if he was life orb, it didn't matter. Uh, life orb sheer force was always killing there. As uh, this turn, I'm going to go into my laddie here and I'm just going to click psychic. Uh, because Psychic into Earthquake, even if he is Shooker, kills his Nidoqueen from here. And uh, chances are he wants to preserve health on his Nidoqueen in order to be able to take on my Magina. So he was more than likely switching out there. But I do Roost, actually. So this <laughs> this match happened a little while ago. I Roost up. I think um, I was EV to avoid like non-life orb ice beams from Modest Queen. So I think that's why I Roosted up there. It must have been why. Actually, no. I Roost up because if he was Sucker Punch... He would have killed Laddie there, and I wouldn't have been able to Healing Wish the following turn. But uh, if he suckered, or even if he Ice Beamed on that turn, I ended up at a higher amount of health. And um, it was ultimately like worth scouting for him having Sucker. Um, but he's, he's now going to go into his Diancy, as I do. Get back up to a nice amount. I'm going to Roost up, because even if he's Modest Moonblast, it, it's not going to do too much to this Laddie. I'm pretty spit F. And I'm, I'm like mixed F, but i got quite a lot of spit F, and I think I'm calm on this set. As his Diamond Storm is going to do about about half. Um, no, no. It's going to do about 40%. So, yeah, we chewed that up pretty nicely. But the fact that he doesn't go for Moonblast means that he's got... He's more than likely got Earth Power. 
for my beginner. He's got Hidden Power Fire, and he's got Diamond Storm. So he's uh, he's if he doesn't have Moonblast in that last slot, it's going to be some utility move like Heal Bell or Trick Room or something like that. So he hasn't clicked Moonblast yet, so that kind of makes me think that he doesn't have it. I'm going to continue roosting up because if, if uh, Latias is at a really nice amount of health, it can always take on Nidoqueen. There's nothing that thing can do uh, to kill Latias in one shot. Um, and he's going to be sheer force, so he's not going to be able to freeze me. And I'll always be able to Healing Wish up um, my beginner in the back, or at least leave Nidoqueen at a range of health where EQ will take it out from Lando, even if he gets Berry. So he's going to Trick Room this turn, revealing his last move. And um, this is really interesting. Trick Room. Uh, I'm trying to think like, what is what is Breaker is to take advantage of Trick Room? It's potentially a really slow Nidoqueen, which could be his set. Um, but I think actually, based on on his video that I watched, I think Trick Room was one of his countermeasures to Shift Gear Beginner, which is really cool. Um, Shift Gear, like if he comes in on Shift Gear Beginner and I don't have like something like Steel Coverage, he can always Trick Room up and Revenge with like an Earthquake Nidoqueen or an Earth Power Nidoqueen if I'm not Carmine. So. Uh, pretty pretty cool prep, in my opinion, from uh, from my opponent. I think he saw McGinnis taking lives in the first couple of games, and really wanted to prep around that. So he's gonna he's gonna leave uh, leave me at about 50 after that diamond storm. But we're gonna recover up with the roost and be at a pretty nice amount of health. As I think I hit in power fire to turn earlier, expecting him to potentially make the switch out into his scissor. If I could have caught that after rocks, he would have died. Um, if he was like an offensive sizzle, which he could be based on this trick room, like kind of strat that my opponents brought, but uh, he's now going to go into a sizzle, and I'm definitely going <laughs> to definitely going to preserve Laddie. Laddie is one of the keys to victory here, so I'm going to go hard out into my Lando. I do have a hidden power fire, like I mentioned, and whilst trick room is still up, it's it's a better option than going hard out into my Holo. And if he lets me, I can uh, I can actually defog. So. That would be that would be even better for my hoe. But he's actually gonna go he's gonna mega evolve up here. Get um get big on us and just be able to click knock off, which is going to yeah, leave Lando at a pretty low amount of health. And uh, certainly not I'm not gonna be able to switch on, on rocks again. Uh, so if I can defog here, I'm gonna get it off. But he does choose to go for the knockoff and take out my Lando. I don't know if he had bullet punch there. Or if he just expected me to maybe, I don't know, switch out to Ho, but um, I do have the Intimidate off, I am a hoer, and uh, even after that rocks, I'm, I'm out of anything, out of range of anything from this, uh, from this Mega Scizor, so I'm going to go for the Roost here, this turn, as he does go out to his Rotom, and I believe he's going to pop his Eye Papa Berry, which, uh, or his, his Super Berry here, which is really, really cool prep, and um, we are going to Roost up to a nice amount of health, um, but like I said, if, if I can get a Toxic off on this thing with Hoer, there's not a lot this, there's really not a lot this, uh, this Rotom can do. But he's going to make the switch out. He's going to go hard out into his Queen here. Hard out into his Nita Queen. As, uh, I think I do just go for the Toxic here. Yeah. I I'd already shown Toxic, so I think he was, not, he wasn't wanting his Rotom to take a hit, uh, to take that Toxic. As now I'm going to go out into my, uh, into my Laddie on his Nita Queen. Uh, just in case he did have Rock Slide. Because my Charlie Berry was popped, I didn't want to risk that. And uh, I'm going to scare out this queen here because if he stays in and I click Psychic, then I, I, I just win with Ho-Oh because Nidoqueen Queen dies to any hit. And the fact that he's got Toxic toxic Stealth Rocks, ground coverage, and then he's going to have like Ice Beam or something for my Lando, reveals that he's more than likely not going to be running Rock Slide. So ho -Oh will actually just be able to solo the rest of his team. But he's going to switch out into into Sizzle, which in my opinion was his best play. Like he doesn't want to lose Nidoqueen. Queen. It's, it's pretty important. And at this point... Uh, he he kind of needs it to check McGinner, uh, but he's gonna go for the bullet punch here. As I am gonna reveal, uh, gonna reveal the healing wish after taking that bullet punch pretty nicely, and uh, yeah, McGinner is gonna come back. So <laughs> big Latias, really really putting the team on its back this week. Um, was able to pivot into Queen, scare it out, and bring back McGinner to uh, to just click calm mind up. Actually, just shift gear up here, and uh, there's, there's no point in come mining, not that I even have the move, because uh, we, we have Hidden Power 5 for the Sizz, we've got Z Synchronize for the Nidoqueen, and Dazzling Gleam for the Rotom, so he's going to go for the Bullet Punch as I shift gear up. Uh, I guess if he's like some kind of like rogue, like, is like Psychic Berry on his Nidoqueen, he can... Um, he can obviously take a hit from beginner, but I'm really not expecting the psychic barrier. I'm I'm thinking he's he's either going to be life orb, 
or he's going to be some sort of super berry, but more than likely Shooker with Ice Beam. That's actually a set that he brought in one of his earlier games, and it's, I think, his best set, honestly, versus me, because it does allow him to check Lando pretty well. Uh, but he's going to bring in Queen here. I think he's going to get chipped by the rocks, and he, he's definitely now in range of the Z-Synchronize, even if he is like a max but F variant, because like I said earlier, the min roll on that is, I think, 99%, so we are going to take out the Nidoqueen with the Z-Synchronize, and uh, it's a pretty fire Z-move. <laughs> I reckon this, this animation is probably one of the better ones. <laughs> so, yeah, this, this Nidoqueen is going to get bounced around and then smashed on its neck, so Nidoqueen's going to drop, and uh, yeah, D-Wheelie is going to send out his Rotom. Beginner just, you know, clutching it yet again. And uh, Rodin's going to come out here. Like I said, I think um, once once his Deancey was toxic, it was going to be really hard for him to, to take on my, my Ho, actually, because just the uh, Ho's crazy spit F in conjunction with Toxic and Roost is just really, really tough for something like Rodin to be able to beat 1v1. So that is going to be the match versus D Willy. Definitely a fun one. I think um, he played this game really well. And uh, a few of my lure sets, like my, my laddie caught his Marsh Shadow off guard, which ultimately, I think, um, removed one of his biggest offensive threats to my team. But that being said, he got a really nice kill with his Marsh Shadow versus my Weavile. His Deancey was a really uh, really nice set here. His, his offensive Deancey was able to pressure my team pretty nicely, but it also was getting all that lefties back, so... Uh, that was definitely, definitely useful for him that he dodged that first Toxic. It meant that Deancey stuck around a lot longer than it would have otherwise. And yeah, I think his Arcanine was pretty cool too, Offensive Arcanine. Uh, it didn't really do much because we had we had the pivots, but it was a, it was a nice bring and it certainly forced my hand in prep. So yeah, it's going to be my week three match in the BBL. Um, definitely good game to D. Willie. Go check out his side of the match. I'll leave his channel in the description. And make sure you guys check out the rest of the coaches in the BBL because... This, like, this is a lot of fun, this league. I, I'm enjoying watching the other games. It's it's fun seeing all these other Ubers in action. Seeing different different, different people's takes on uh, these new mons. And I think it's very refreshing for sure. So that's going to be it. Drop a like if you guys enjoyed. We recently hit 1,000 subscribers, which is which is massive. So I want to thank you guys all for your support. And yeah, it does, does really mean a lot. And it makes me want to keep uploading. So yeah, thanks guys. I'll catch you next time.